Hello and good day, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's Client Enrichment Series presentation, The Future of Federal Work Insights. My name is James Fotopoulos, and I'm a Regional Account Manager out of Region 6 in Kansas City. Before we begin, I want to let everyone know that we are recording today's session. We will post archived Client Enrichment Series videos on our YouTube channel, where you can access more than 30 past sessions any time, day, or night. There is a link to our YouTube channel at the end of today's slide deck. We would also like to make you aware of the available GSA resources to assist you and your organization navigating through the current pandemic environment and safe return to physical work spaces. At the end of the deck are links to GSA's COVID-19 resources page and the Return to Facilities Portal website. Both of these are linked directly from a home page at gsa.gov. Today's pr presentation will be led by Brian Gilligan and Jane Schuster. A little bit about Brian. He is a professional engineer and high performance building expert in Office of Government Wide Policy. He has 20 years of experience in facilities, construction, and energy management, and a passion for sustainability in the built environment. He is currently leading the Workplace 2030 effort to envision the future of federal work and developing tools and methods to make every project at GSA a learning experience. Jane Schuster is a workplace specialist strategist with GSA's Total Workplace Program Management Office. She has been with GSA for nearly 10 years, spending the majority of her career as an interior designer in GSA's Heartland region in Kansas City. I do have some housekeeping instructions. We have automatically muted your audio to help control the sound quality of the presentation. If you are new to using Zoom, welcome. We have found that the Zoom for Government platform to be pretty intuitive and user-friendly. You can customize your view with different pods as you see fit. Speaking of, you will see there is a chat pod as well as a Q&A pod. For this session, please use the chat pod for any administrative questions you have or to report any issues you're experiencing and our, one of our CES team members can assist you. Please do not use the raise hand function to ask a question during today's presentation. We want you to use all, or at least keep all the dialogue in the Q&A pod. Any questions that we're unable to get today will be noted and answered and posted on our website at www.gsa.gov backslash CES. Thanks to everyone that's saying today, before we turn it over to Brian and Jane, PBS Acting Commissioner Allison Azevedo will give her opening remarks. Great. Well, thank you, James, and thank you for the invitation to speak today. Um, it's my pleasure to be talking about the future of federal work. I can't think of any other way I'd like to spend my time as the Acting PBS Commissioner than to be talking with our federal partners about what the pandemic has taught us and how we can really use that information to really propel us into new thinking of how our employees will perform their work in the future. As James said, my name is Allison Azevedo. I've been with the Public Building Service for a few decades now. I guess anything after two, you can say a few, but I'm really excited to serve in the acting commissioner role. Uh, normally I'm the PBS deputy commissioner and I've been alongside of you during over a year of experiencing how we deal with the pandemic within our own personal lives as and certainly within our facilities and how still we can accomplish our mission. Today, the future of federal work is definitely upon all of us. We've experienced these dramatic changes due to the pandemic, some which were unimaginable over a year ago. At the start, of 2020, work was primarily accomplished in the office. Remote work or telework was considered, in most cases, an individual employee benefit. But now, for most federal agencies, telework is an integral part of how we continue to deliver our mission, knowing full well that we still do have employees in facilities, depending on what that mission work is. Last summer, we started to consider what the future of federal work might be. Federal partners started to ask GSA, what is GSA planning to do? So with that, we started 
something that we're calling Workplace 2030. And I wanna take you back over a decade to talk about in the early 2000s, an initiative similar, but very different, which GSA created. It was called Workplace 2020. That initiative studied the future of work and the way it was accomplished was very different than what we're looking at here. It was really focused on how we could design facilities and do interior planning differently. It focused on how the workplace supported health and well being, attracting and retaining talent, employee engagement, accomplishing workplace evolution and change, reducing energy and operational costs, and ensuring the ultimate flexibility within the federal footprint. Contrary to popular thought, the name Workplace 2020 did not refer to the year 2020, but rather looking at the workplace with a 2020 vision, a clear vision. Our Workplace 2020 study and subsequent projects at GSA, many of you partnered with GSA on these, help prepare us, help prepare the federal government for the pandemic that we're not, that we're currently enduring. As mentioned earlier, during the summer of last year, we realized that the way federal employees are now accomplishing work challenged the preconceived notions of how, when, and where work can be accomplished. The pandemic has provided real-time lessons on how the shift to a more distributed work model which we we're talking about pre-2020 can support the well-being of federal employees, the pursuit of our mission, and it fundamentally changed how we think about physical workplace. That said, now is the time for us to be at the forefront and lead with our expertise. Look at those technologies in the private sector, bring those into the public sector planning process to think how we can evolve the federal workplace for our workforce. We have a once in a generation opportunity to continue to change the landscape of the federal workplace, rethink the value of the workplace and the workplaces that we're building and creating, co-creating into the future. So Workplace 2030 isn't about what's gonna happen in 2030, it's a GS, GSA initiative in collaboration with all federal partners designed to envision the future of work for the federal government. Using public and private sector input, we're developing a framework and a set of actionable ideas and strategies for supporting the federal government's near term and future work practices. Today, you will hear about our findings gathered through a series of conversations across the federal government, which connects the concept of technology and space together in innovative ways to support federal workforce and work being accomplished. These findings also support and align very well with GSA's property strategies and the administration's priorities on managing the COVID response building a bridge to economic recovery, advancing diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility, and tracking and preparing for climate change and climate resiliency in our facilities. Not only does Workplace 2030 support the mission and resiliency requirements for the federal workforce to deliver the missions in the future, it also increases employment opportunities opens doors to underserviced areas and communities, supports our climate and sustainability priorities, honoring and continuing to leverage the investments we will be putting in place and so much more. I hope that you find today's discussions interesting, energizing and very useful to you. We value your input. Again, thank you for joining in today. I hope you have a great rest of the day and I look forward to connecting with you in the future. At this point, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Brian Gilligan, who is our Workplace 2030 Project Manager. Brian? 
Great. Thank you so much, Allison. And, and thank you for that really wonderful introduction to what we're uh, trying to accomplish and how we're trying to seize this once in a generation opportunity, as, as you put it. Um, the Workplace 2030 project, um, as Allison had mentioned, was conceived as a way for GSA to work with other federal agencies to create a vision for what the future of federal work could be. Um, we convened over 100 experts from uh, 17 different agencies plus GSA. In the course of uh, several meetings, uh, we identified um, really in, in simple terms an overarching vision and a framework for what we think the future of federal work should be. And that really boils down to this idea that in the future, work can be done from anywhere and asynchronously. Uh, will no longer be tied to a single place or to a rigid schedule. Um, so as we look forward, real estate will still be critical, um, something especially needed for maintaining and enhancing human connections, as we'll talk about in a while. But it's not how work is pulled together. Um, the force that really brings work together now and in the future is technology. And that's what allows us really to work anywhere, anytime, for reasons um, uh, good and bad. Um, so let's talk a little bit about how we created that vision. As Allison mentioned, it was a co-creation uh, from 18 different agencies. And really what we tried to do is we started with trying to get an understanding of the current state of work. What had the response to the pandemic of the last year really taught us about what was changing, what was possible? And through a series of interviews with subject matter experts in areas like human resources, uh, information technology, real estate, as Alan Allison mentioned, looking at what was going on in the private sector, we're able to get a good sense for what was going on, what, what, what kind of opportunities were being opened up. And then we convened a series of discussion groups and workshops with those federal agency partners to really try to envision what the future could be, really try to brainstorm and be creative about where we could go. After we kind of generated a lot of really good ideas, and I hope a lot of enthusiasm for that, we conduct a series of uh, collaborative sessions with our internal uh, consultant partners and uh, other partners from the uh, federal design community, really try to hammer out what that vision, that future vision of, the, of work could be. Um, so that's where, uh, where we are now. What I would say is as we're moving out of this current phase, which we consider the study phase of the project, which is a lot of what I'm gonna be talking about today, and we move into the implementation, or, sorry, implementation phase of this project, where the rubber meets the road, which is a lot of what Jane will talk about today, we're still going to be working with you guys, with your federal agencies to co-create what the future looks like. I really wanted to understand what, what aspects of this vision resonate with your agency and what are practical uh, to implement. Uh, so we'll be co-creating that vision with you. Well, let's talk a little bit about kind of that, that, that process that we went through, in particular, um, how we got our hands around what the current moment was teaching us. Um, and so to do this, we, we conducted discussion groups, which asked a lot of questions, but mainly they can be boiled down into kind of two things. What was working and what was not working? And looking at that from a couple of different perspectives. First, from the perspective of the workforce, uh, from the human perspective, what human reactions and responses to what was going on, what was working and what was not working for the people involved. And then from a workplace and services perspective, how was working at home working and how were the support services that were available serving those needs? So from that, we got this good idea, I think, of, of kind of what was working, what wasn't working in our response to the pandemic. And we used that as a point of departure for our workshops, which really got into this, this question of, of how do we envision the future? And that's, that's kind of a, a, that's a real challenging thing to leave the present behind and all the challenges and, and things that our, our minds are engaged with on a day-to-day -day basis and really look at what could be five, 10 years from now um, so we can understand what we're, what we're striving for. And we kind of, we, we approached this from a couple of different directions. First was looking at really trying to understand what are the forces that are influencing work currently? And what are the opportunities that arise from that? As well as what are some of the barriers and challenges that need to be overcome? Really just this idea of where we, what direction we could go and what would be, uh, at what sort of forces would be acting on us. And then the second thing we did was really trying to um, create a series of narratives that would help pull people out of their present day thinking and really get them uh, you know, several years in the, in the future when we've been able to create these optimal conditions. And we really looked at, at two different areas. One was trying to get people to envision what does an optimal distributed workforce look like? What are some of the features that, that are, are part of distributed work? What are some of the supports that uh, technology are providing? What are the services that, that are being provided to workers? How are people interacting and making sure that they have the sorts of connections that they need to get their, their work done? How are they maintaining the seamless connection between individuals? So that was kind of one thing that we looked at. 
And we found that technology was an, a, a significant part of that. So we actually convened another workshop just looking at technology on its own or the technological, uh, technological programs that we really need to be working on and, and, and what, what is part of that future of work from a technology standpoint. Um, and then we also looked at this idea of what does the future facility look like? What does the future office look like? Um, in, a, in a distributed workforce, um, we are still gonna need an office. And so what services is that workplace providing? What are people doing when they come to the office? What is it that they missed about the current office or what, are they, what is it that they missed about the office today that we need to make sure is part of the office of tomorrow? Um, and then we really wanted to make the, a special emphasis on this idea that federal facilities could be co-location facilities, places where agencies wouldn't just have their own dedicated space, but might be sharing services between them. And, you know, really any, uh, any employee from any agency could go and use this space. So we really tried to understand, well, what does that look like and what services would have to be provided there? So again, after, after these, these narrative um, uh, workshops, which are really meant to pull people out of the present and into the future, we generated a tremendous amount of ideas and, and, and thoughts about what the future could look like. And I hope a lot of enthusiasm and excitement for that, for that process as well. Um, and so what I'd like to do now is invite all of you on this, um, uh, on this call to maybe do a little bit of that future casting yourselves. And we'd like to do that with a poll. Um, we have a, a couple of questions that we'd like to get your uh, feedback on, both from your individual perspectives, as well as from the perspective of your agency about where things might be heading. James, do you want to introduce us? Sure, Brian. We're going to go ahead and, and launch the poll questions. Now, if for some reason with the Zoom and you, you're on Zoom, you didn't uh, download the app and you're using the browser, the, these poll questions will not show up, but they are in the presentation. So we didn't leave you out. The first question is, personally, now that you've lived through the pandemic response, do you desire changes to your environment and working conditions? Answers are critical, somewhat, not at all. And there is not a wrong answer. So don't feel like we're, we're trying to pin you in on an answer. So feel free and just whatever your opinion is, there's no wrong answer. The second question is, is, is your agency interested in changing its approach to work and the workplace soon after the return to office? No status quo, some simple changes, changes, yes, significant changes. And if you're not seeing the polls, you can also answer in, in the uh, chat as well. We'll just give uh, another 10 seconds for those to, to answer. Really, thank you guys for sharing your thoughts on this. It's, it's really important for us to gather as much information as we can. And this is just really an incredible venue for us to have so many folks from so many different agencies at so many different levels uh, contribute their opinions. So really appreciate your taking the time to do this. So we're gonna go ahead and close the polls and we'll see the results. Uh, looks like we're split on the first question, critical somewhat. And on the uh, second question, Looks like uh, we're split between some simple changes changes, and yes, significant change. Yeah, it's really interesting to see the, the results here. So what, what really stands out to me is that relatively few that will just kind of snap back to, to business as usual. Um, it seems like uh, slight majorities or slightly the largest um, groups are expecting some change or simple changes, but a significant portion of folks almost half are expecting uh, significant change in the future. So it's interesting to see that. And I think that was, that was a lot of what we saw from our, from our discussions as well. Uh, great, well, thanks. Really appreciate your, um, uh, your sharing that. Your All right, we'll, that. Stop, uh, we'll stop sharing the results on that. Close that out. So as we mentioned, the, the point of um, the, the workshops and the discussion groups and all the process that we were going through is really to generate um, a lot of uh, key insights, uh, really try to figure out what the future of work could be. And, and we did, in fact, um, generate a number of really, uh, I think, interesting and important insights that we're going to share with you now um, under the guise of guiding principles. So you can think of these as principles to help guide how we look at the future and how we look at kind of what we need to do to realize that future. And I think the first and probably most important um, kind of insight that we had was that distributed work or work that you do, uh, not necessarily at the office, but where you have teams that are working in many different places, is trusted work. 
Um, it's no longer going to be possible for us to assume that work is done in one particular place. Like Allison said before, we, we assumed that work was going to be done at the office in the past. Um, and so uh, that idea that um, uh, work is done primarily at the office and then sometimes done um, in a mobile fashion, um, uh, depending on the, uh, um, uh, the nature of, of, of work or um, uh, what needs to be done in any, any particular time, you're still assuming that by and large you're going to be at the office. That has really shifted to something where we've seen that remote work can work. Um, that remote work can provide high quality results. And so we probably see that in the future, what we're gonna find is more of a continuum where some people are working on site, some people are working remote, remotely, and most of us are probably working somewhere in between, but doing more remote work than possible. And what that really opens up, this idea that uh, distributed work is trusted work, is the idea that remote work can be part of our, or can be an integral part of our real estate strategy. So that's a really important insight that, that came from this. The next insight really has to do with the office. So we think that the genie is pretty much out of the bottle and work that we've been able to do successfully from home during this pandemic period will probably continue to be done at home in the future, but we're still going to need an office. There are still functions that it provides that are, are critical. It's just gonna need to be refocused. And the result is it's gonna look different than it currently does. And so from our perspective, there are really, I think three key things that the office is going to have to do in the future. First and foremost, it's going to be a place where people will come together um, to maintain and enhance those human connections, as we've said before. It's a place where people will come to collaborate, to be stimulated, to um, have their creativity um, jump-started, uh, to create trust and, and, and teamwork between team members. All that's going to be really uh, a critical function of the office and probably a bigger part of what it does than it currently is. The second thing is it's going to be a place that houses critical resources. Um, and things that are impractical to duplicate at home. Um, you can think of things like secure communication facilities or labs, maybe in the future, 3D printing facilities, but things that's just impractical to do at home will still be housed at the office. And then third, and I think this is really critical, perhaps as important as the other two, we really do need a space for those who can't effectively work at home to come to work, or even people that just don't wanna work from home. They should have an option, a place that they can go. And so the workplace of the future is going to provide that too. So we'll still want to work from the office. It's just going to look different than it does today. The next key finding that we had was that agencies are much more willing to share space than we had really heard in the past. Um, as members of the design community, I think we know that you can improve the efficiency or the utilization of space by sharing some resources within an organization. Conference rooms are a great example of that. But what we found in these, these discussions with agencies is that they're actually very willing to consider sharing space between agencies. Um, and that opens up a whole new world of efficiency and potential cost savings, all of which can be reinvested in mission, which I think is a big reason why agencies are interested in this. Perhaps the most example, or sorry, perhaps the most um, obvious example is, is sharing conference facilities. And actually the most used part of our GSA headquarters at 1800F in DC is our shared conferencing facility. Um, that's just in constant demand. So that's probably the most on, uh, on obvious example. But we also heard that even specialized spaces like secure communications facilities could potentially be shared. There was a willingness to, to explore that as long as we could provide secure connections and that they were guaranteed a seat when they needed it. Um, their individuals, so their employees would be able to find space when they needed it. So that opens up a whole world uh, for us to really explore in the future. Um, the next um, uh, insight that we gained was really this idea that remote work can be an important recruitment and retention tool. And this was something that was, was expressed over and over again. This idea that if we can untether a job from a specific geographic location, that we really do have the opportunity to make the entire country our talent pool. And we can hire the best qualified person regardless of where they live. I had an interesting example of somebody at one of our, our agencies who was speaking a uh, contracting officer and was consistently getting very, very low response to the application. When they removed the geographic restriction, they got over 100 applications. Uh, so an incredible um, opening of possibility. In, in similar fashion, if you have an employee that's doing a great job on your team and you, you want to keep them, but they, they just want to move out of the area that they're living in currently, or maybe their spouse gets relocated somewhere, uh, remote work allows them to do that. And in both cases, we have this opportunity potentially um, to allow people to move and perhaps move to lower cost areas, which can be an additional source of cost savings. 
In fact, GSA projects that we could save as much as a billion dollars over the next 10 years if we implement um, extensive um, uh, changes to our work practices. A significant portion of that is this idea of people choosing to live in lower cost areas. So this is a really important recruitment and retention tool. Um, the next insight that we had was that distributed work is really seen as an employee benefit. It's been pretty consistent that employees say they appreciate working from home as a way to allow more scheduling flexibility, uh, more flexibility in their, in their, in their work-life balance. Um, but, what, but that really kind of got turbocharged in the, um, uh, in the current situation. And so a survey of GSA employees during the, um, uh, the last year identified that over 90% of our folks actually would like to do uh, more telework when they return, when, when things go back to normal uh, than they had in the past. And fully 40% would like to work full time from home if given the chance. So that's a big shift in perspective and I think opens up a, a real avenue of discussion potentially for us with collective bargaining units, um, as this is another attribute that our employees and their constituents really want. Um, and the next um, uh, kind of real uh, takeaway um, is, is a little bit broader. And there are several challenges that we need to overcome. So not everything is, is positive. Um, and I think there are kind of two big uh, divisions here. Uh, the first is that we really did come face to face with some of the challenges um, and some of the limitations uh, that are uh, inherent in, in today's technology. These can be things like um, trouble connecting to the internet, um, something that I think we've all probably experienced uh, tr troubles with uh, meeting um, uh, platforms, especially if you're trying to engage more than one agency at a time, that's been a real challenge. But it can even be simple things, just that as, as teams were suddenly thrust into a distributed work environment, there were growing pains. Um, and I think there's a real need for us to create things like best practices and perhaps trainings that can help distributed teams be as effective as they are at the office. Um, so that's, that's one kind of camp of the challenges. The other camp I think are more cultural in nature. Um, we really do as human beings want to interact and, inter and relate with, with others, especially our, our colleagues. So we do need to make sure that we're creating that, that opportunity in the future. In fact, a, a part of our um, you know, estimated savings for GSA as an enterprise actually includes an offset where we're spending more on travel to make sure that that is, that is possible. So we do need to create the space and the time for face-to-face -face interactions. Um, and I think perhaps most important in the background of all is this idea of really trying to make sure that we maintain people's ability to separate their personal life from their work life. I made the statement earlier that um, uh, work can be done anywhere, anytime. And that's very true, but we need to make sure there are cultural norms within our organizations in place that allow people to maintain some distinctions. We're not blurring that line too much and making things that are maybe not good or, or unsustainable in the long run. But all of these challenges that we're talking about really speak to this idea of needing a set of workplace or work support services that'll help agencies and individuals understand and adapt their current work practices to new ways of working. Um, and that really brings us to um, our transition into um, the idea of implementation and what, what this looks like. How do we get to our future state of work? So we believe, and what really came out strongly from our, our workshops and our analysis afterwards, was that in order to capture this opportunity and to address the challenges that I was just talking about, GSA really is going to need to take a, a completely new approach. And we think first and foremost, that means deploying an interrelated mix of services. We think the days where GSA is primarily looking at incremental uh, inter, uh, interactions with clients and looking primarily at real estate as being over. In the future, it's going to be a mix of services that include technology, real estate, and those work support services, helping teams and, and in individuals and agencies adapt to the new way of work. And, and that need is going to change over time. So we're going to have a real need to work very extensively with our agency partners. We see almost a continual engagement with them where we're really trying to understand how work and their mission are evolving and uh, adapting our services to that. And to give you a little bit of a thought about how important that might be, uh, as uh, tumultuous as the last year has been with responding to the pandemic, the changes that we foresee in technology over the next 10 years may be just as important. Just consider what automation might do to our workforce or what uh, machine learning, how machine learning and other kind of advanced analytic capabilities might change the nature of what we do. Every agency is going to be experiencing this and experiencing it slightly differently. So we'll need to be continuously engaged and joined with our clients to adapt our services to make sure we're serving those needs. And I think the next slide, the, the biggest aspect and probably the thing that we need to try to get our hands around first 
or early in the process, is this idea of hybrid and remote work driving the model. Agencies have different priorities because they have different missions and they have different workforces. And that means they're each gonna need a different mix of services. Consider for a second what we'd said before about this shift in perspective from work being assumed to be done primarily at the office. In the future, there will still be some individuals who work primarily on site because their job requires it. I think secure uh, people that work in secure facilities is probably the most obvious example of that. But there will probably be just as many people that will be working remotely full time because their jobs allow it and they want to. And then the rest of us will be somewhere in between, probably working more from home than we have in the past. And each of those instances is a little bit different in terms of the services that are required. If you're on site, you probably need more real estate services then you might need technology and, and work support. But the folks that are remote are gonna need more of the technology and work support side. So really for us, uh, kind of an imperative is, is trying to work with our federal agency partners to really understand what that mix is, what their mobility readiness is, and then co-create the right solutions uh, with them uh, to serve those needs. So let's think a little bit about um, hybrid and remote work in your agency. We'd really be interested in your thoughts um, about kind of how far your agency is gonna go in that direction. So we have another polling question for you. Um, James, do you wanna take us through that? Sure. We'll go ahead and put that polling question on the screen so we can have a little bit of interaction. So the question is, how far do you think your agency will move toward remote and hybrid work? A, none status quo, B, some simple changes, C, far significant change, D, uncertain. So feel free, if, if you're not seeing the polling questions, you can use the uh, chat pod and put your answer there. And we'll give this uh, a couple seconds. All right, we'll go ahead and close out that poll and we'll get the uh, the results. And it looks like uh, people chose C as the front, run uh, front runner, significant change. Yeah, it looks by a, a pretty significant margin, uh, significant changes is the most. And then um, almost everybody is experiencing or is expecting um, some, some change. Um, Good fifth of folks saying that they're uncertain, and I think that's perfectly natural at this point. Well, great. Well, again, thanks so much for, for sharing your, your perspectives on this. Um, what I'd like to do now is, is shift our perspective to where the rubber meets the road. Um, and I'd like to introduce uh, Jane Schuster, who's the Acting Director of the Center for Workplace Strategy in GSA, talk a little bit about what we're doing to set ourselves up for success. Thanks so much, Brian. So that was a great background information. I wanted to shift and now start talking more about the services that GSA is working to create to help support your agencies. So certainly in order to support this maintained increase in mobility that we anticipate coming out of the pandemic, even into the future for a long time, we realized that we would need to create these new services. We also wanted to rethink some of the other existing services. So as your agency is now determining how to address this opportunity in front of you, we certainly hope that you'll rely on GSA to help you support these new ways of working that will bolster your efforts and also increase your rates of success. So through our Workplace 2030 project, our working group identified 15 new and repurposed services. So we're calling this full collection of services a suite of services. Some of these services may not end up coming to fruition, but others have emerged as being extremely critical in order to assist agencies such as yourself with your future workplace support needs. So some of the services that I'll be talking about today, like Home Office in a Box, it's a brand new service to the federal government. Other services like workplace standards are existing but they just need to be rethought in this new current context that we're all living in. And finally, other services like space monitors are based on existing technologies that are already out there, but yet we don't apply them frequently to date within the federal government realm. So taking those existing technologies and pushing them farther. 
So we'll talk a little bit about several of these services in more detail and how we're working to make them a reality here in just a couple minutes. But first I wanted to share a little bit about that process behind the scenes to help you understand which services we determined we first needed to focus that immediate effort on. So to do that, our team examined three major factors for each of those 15 services that you saw on the previous slide. So we looked at the overall impact for our external agencies, or in other words, we looked at which of those services would have the greatest result for the largest volume of our customers. Then we looked at the speed at which we could prioritize development of each of those services. And then finally, we considered the ease of implementation. So looking at which projects we could find quick wins and quick solutions for our customers. In order to develop what we called a prioritization ranking for each of those services, our team conducted a voting exercise and our votes stemmed from two things. One is our own personal areas of expertise, but also very critically, our votes stemmed from what we heard from those collaboration sessions that Brian mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. So 18 external customer agencies participating, over a hundred different experts. And so when we voted, we based our information on personal uh, expertise and also what we heard. So what emerged from that voting exercise is this spider web of information. It details the services that ranked both the highest in terms of impact and the services that ranked the highest in terms of urgency. So using the results from that exercise, those 15 emerging services were ranked in order of priority. And then I'll review a few of those that came to the top here in just a minute. So as I'm going through this slide, I want you to be thinking, because I'm going to tee up, we're going to do a polling question following this slide. And the question is going to be, which of these services do you think your agency could benefit most from? And so keep that in the back of your mind as I go through each of these in a little bit more detail. So the first concept here, the home office in a box. So thinking about the home office, it's now a part of our real estate strategy. And for that reason, it should be equipped accordingly. So the home office is this idea, we need to support that home worker, whether they're working from a dedicated workspace, maybe you're working from your kitchen table today or your guest bedroom, wherever that is, that home office in a box concept here is a one-stop shop for your agency and you personally to be able to purchase the ergonomic furniture IT equipment and other equipment and tools that you need personally to make your home workspace more effective, more comfortable when you are working from home. So we envision this home office in a box to be a kit of furnishings, kit of technology and work support services that would be then provided by the government or potentially supported by a stipend. So we would use a website or an app to let you select the required items that you need personally for your home office concept. So the home office in a box is a brand new service that GSA needs to create from scratch. This isn't new to industry, but it certainly is new for the federal government. The next idea here is the workplace and technology showcase. So once some staff start returning to the office and others continue to telework, or maybe you're in that situation right now, we know that technology to support that seamless connection and also an equitable experience is going to be absolutely critical. Agencies and individuals will need a way to test out emerging technologies, to test out new furnishings, new ways of working and support services. So we're creating a workplace and technology showcase space within our headquarters building in Washington, DC, 1800 F Street. This is going to be a space where agencies can come and test out new furniture, new equipment, and really experience new work practices in a living workspace. The next concept is GSA Flex Hub or Space as a Service. This idea is that we will provide federal co-working space to agencies on an as needed basis. So this flex hub could be an alternate site available for your agency and your employees 
and it would have shared resource spaces like shared workspaces, shared conference rooms and training spaces. Agencies would then be able to shed underutilized workspaces in lieu of knowing that you have access still to those real estate services and spaces within that Flex Hub. You don't need to necessarily recreate it across each and every agency. So that expensive build out could be avoided. In order to make that Flex Hub co-working concept a reality, and also part of that workplace technology showcase space I already talked about. Something that would be needed to support both of these is a work support mobile app. So a work support app would help you locate available workspaces, locate colleagues, and find support services in that showcase space or perhaps within that federal flex hub space. That app could then be used to increase the ease of access for federal employees and also promote awareness of opportunities, events, and news. And that app could also be used to provide feedback on how that space is performing to ensure that our future spaces are even better designed. And the final concept here to mention is space monitors and feedback loop. So this will leverage technology to support and capture feedback in our services and spaces to help individuals navigate these new ways of work. So space sensors in a work area could tie into building systems to create a smart building. So an example of this would be sensors in a training room. They could monitor air quality and air temperature and talk to that building system and tell it to kick on if the occupancy within that space requires increased airflow or additional cooling within the space. So with the context of all of that, we're gonna to turn to another poll and James, if you want to pop that up, and as you're going through that, I'm going to do a quick reminder of what each of those are. I know it's kind of daunting to try to remember. So here's the uh, polling question. And feel free to, if you're not seeing this on your screen, to you use our chat pod to answer this as well. Which of these services do you think your agency would benefit most from? Home in the office, workplace showcase, GSA Flex Hub, space monitoring, feedback loops, workspace app. So go ahead and we'll take a couple seconds to answer that. Okay, so I'm gonna talk through those. Hopefully it's not too distracting for you all. Home office and oh, that's that kit of furnishings and technology to support your homework. So ergonomic furniture and things like that. Workplace and technology showcase space is that place for agencies to come out and test equipment and furniture in new work practices while you're actually working. The GSA Flex Hub, that's more of that federal co-working model. Space monitors and feedback loop provide data on space usage and performance to help improve designs over time. And then finally, work support app. That's that mobile application to find, book, make a reservation, locate teammates and resources. All right, Jane, I think that bought enough time for people to answer and probably change their answer. So we'll go ahead and close that out. And the, uh, the lead answer on that was home office in a box. That's fantastic. Yeah, that definitely was at the very top of our priority list when we did that ranking exercise. So I'm not surprised, and I also have to assume that many, many of you, and there's over 450 people on the call, that I know some of you are in the office, but a lot of you are still working from home. So making sure that you are um, being supported at your home office in terms of the furniture is really critical. So thanks for that, James. So I wanna talk a little bit more about these services, but in a different context. So each of those 15 services, and, I, and we went into detail on five of those, but remember there were 15 in total. So each of those 15 services can fall into four broad concepts at this point to ensure more effective federal workplace of the future. So those four concepts are reimagining the workplace, real estate strategies, smarter spaces, and enabling workforce mobility. 
So I'll review emerging services here in a little bit more detail under the framework of those four broad concepts. So certainly we realized that the reasons for going into the office have changed. Allison and Brian both touched on that. So the office will be this center of collaboration, of sharing resources and a variety of work settings. So this concept, this reimagining the workspace is an adaptable or existing concept because our Center for Workplace Strategy, where I represent, we have well-established engagement processes currently to help agencies understand how your office can evolve to new ways of working. And you may have even worked with me or my colleagues in the past on workplace engagement. So we're adapting this process to provide new services like comprehensive mobility readiness assessments, using those space monitors to track space use, and new approaches to flexible furnishings and flexible technology. So as previously mentioned, we're creating this furniture and technology showcase space in our 1800F facility in Washington. And we anticipate that will be ready later this year for you and your agency partners to come and experience that future of work firsthand. Workplace strategies that we've discussed cannot be a reality unless we have funding. Unfortunately though, as you all know, funds to make that happen can often be scarce. So I wanted to let you know that the Real Property D Disposal Group at GSA can help with this by providing real property assessments and also solutions for leveraging existing equity in underperforming buildings. Our team can provide valuation studies, relocation assistance, and other expertise in real property policy to help apply this approach. And again, like the last one, this is noted as an existing or adaptable concept because we do already have that ability to assist your agency with real property assessments and solutions. Our Smarter Spaces offering will create this physical workspace that connects the federal workforce with the latest technology. So using space monitors and sensors to gather data on space use and performance will help improve our designs over time. So creating these feedback loops within our buildings to continually create safe, healthy, comfortable, and also very productive environments for employees. The technology in this emerging offering, it does exist today, but it hasn't been widely or incorporated within federal buildings. So again, our technology showcase space at 1800F in DC will help you explore some of these functions later on this year. And then finally, the home office in a box, which you all mentioned, 53% of you said that that was the, the biggest priority for you. We certainly realize the home office is an integral part now of our real estate strategy. So making sure that we're equipping it and supporting the home worker is really critical. We envision that home office in a box. Again, it's that one-stop shop for furniture, technology, and work support services that individuals will need to be as productive at home or wherever you are, whether it's in the office, in the home, on travel, or at home. So the mobility readiness assessment will help evaluate that progress that we're already making to achieve those goals over time. As I mentioned earlier, the home office in a box concept, it is brand new for the federal government, but we have deployed a team to start thinking about exactly what do we need to do to make this a reality and make it a reality as quickly as possible. So I also wanted to mention that concurrently as we're working on projects to create those five emerging services into reality, we're also working on phase two of our Workplace 2030 project. So in this coming phase, we'll continue to build upon existing Center for Workplace Strategy processes for engaging with you. For example, our workplace strategy, both in the regions and at central office, we frequently work with agencies on workplace engagements to understand your needs, to help you think about tools to create and design more effective workspaces, and also thinking more holistically about your workspace and how it does support that federal worker. So continuing through phase two of our Workplace 2030 project, we'll begin working on a series of engagements with our customers who are ready to be those first out of the gates to create 
future workspaces to accommodate that full workplace ecosystem. So as we begin initial projects with customers, and hopefully it's you, to create those case studies to really think about spaces that are used as being innovative and effective solutions. Our Center for Workplace Strategy goal is to always be that trusted advisor for you. We want to be closely tied in with your long-term portfolio planning. And we want to do that on an incremental basis, not just on a five or 10 year cycle when your lease or your occupancies are expiring. We want that ongoing relationship with you throughout time so that we can help you and we can also understand how GSA needs to adjust our services as new technology, new work practices, and your agency missions are evolving. So at this point in our Workplace 2030 project, what we're is we're really looking to make as many of these services a reality as soon as possible. But we're also ready to start working with any customers that are ready to begin planning for implementing these future workplace concepts that will transform your landscape of the federal. So if your agency is interested in partnering with us or you need some more information or are ready to start that dialogue, there's three different ways that you can reach out to us. So the first is that if you have an ongoing relationship with your regional workplace team, you can certainly reach out to them. I've listed their contacts here on the sheet and you're welcome to reach out. Secondly, if you don't have a regional workplace contact or you're located in central office, you are welcome to me directly and my colleagues at the National Center for Workplace Strategy team. And we can be reached at workplace at gsa.gov. That address is also listed there on the screen. And then finally, you can always contact your national customer engagement team. I've linked that here. I, it looks like you all have the slides, but if not, they will be posted. Um, on gsa.gov forward slash CES website here shortly. Um, and if you can't wait for the slides or you don't have them, you can always go to gsa.gov and in the About Us section, you can find the context for your national customer engagement team. So looking at the time, looks like we're just out. And I wanted to wrap up here today and, and just reiterate that GSA's mission is to support your mission. So as you deliver your spaces and support for the American taxpayer, we're creating this new vision of the future of federal work that will help you deliver your mission more effectively at the lowest cost. So James, um, I, well, we've listed Brian and my contact information here, and then I know you've got some info on the next CES session. So I'll turn it to you for a minute. Yes, and um, our Zoom host um, posted a link there for our COVID-19 resources. So um, there's lots and lots of resources. I go to that probably uh, at least once a week if I have customers that have questions about HVAC guidance, cleaning, mask mandates, things like that. So um, if you have time, click on that on that site. There's a lot of drill, drill down menus. And you could probably uh, spend a couple nights uh, late at night looking at these resources if, if you're having if, uh, if you're having trouble sleeping. So click on those and uh, you'll get a lot, a lot of information there. So Jane, I don't know, do, do we have a couple questions we could we could pose to you? And yeah, there's some the ones we don't get to. And I also wanted to say, obviously we don't have time to get to all of your questions today. So we will be answering those and posting them to that um, gsa.gov slash CES site. Um, so you all have access to that. Um, so trying to figure out what is kind of in the last four minutes of our meeting. Um, Brian? Uh, one, of the, one of the questions that was, I think, pretty popular was um, as far as having technology showcase be available, I, Jane, you had mentioned 1800F is, uh, will be um, maybe a site to go see. But for those that are outside of DC, will any of our GSA regional offices partake in that? Or Yeah, that's a great question, James. And, and I didn't see who posted that, but thanks. Um, so first of all, we're looking to do our showcase space first in the DC market, just because that's where we've got kind of the, the biggest group of federal employees. And so that makes the most sense for us to start with that. So each of those services that we are, you know, indeed emerging services will be rolled out in a beta format so that we can gauge feedback and make them even better moving forward. 
Um, so same as that, that showcase space is that beta version at 1800 F in DC. Um, if we find successes there and we find regional locations that we also want to implement that as well, certainly we'll be looking to expand, um, but really kind of dipping our toes in the water and getting feedback before we expand too rapidly. So the ultimate answer to that is in time, assuming that we have a lot of success at 1800F, yeah, you should have a regional location as well at some point. Thanks, Jane. And there was another question, and I, and I think this is probably a, a general question that obviously you probably get a lot. Um, as far as funding for some of these technologies, are there any vehicles that GSA or um, our customers can use? I, I'm thinking off the top of my head, maybe FIT funding. I'm not sure if that's something that can play into that or not. Yes, so let me address the FIT funding thing, and then Brian, maybe you have some other ideas on that. So yeah, as your agency is starting to think about innovative ways. We certainly do have the FIT program that's furniture and IT, and mostly it's furniture unless you're located in the NCR location, and then it is IT as well. But the FIT program allows your agency to um, is essentially uh, lease furniture from GSA over a period of five years, and at the end of that period, then ownership can transfer to your agency. So you don't have to fund the furniture up front. GSA will do that. You just pay for it incrementally. So that is a great way if your agency is looking to do some um, major changes to your workspace and you do need new furniture to go along with that. Fit certainly could be something. And those regional workplace executives, I'm going to go back here really quick in my slide deck, hopefully. Um, all of your regional workplace executives are well versed in fit. Brian, was there anything on technology you wanted to add? Um, no, not directly. I, I think the uh, the fit program is an excellent um, uh, excellent resource to direct people for in our in our organization as well set up to to execute that. Um, you also mentioned the uh, the disposal uh, route. There are uh, there's uh, funding that's available through through that program. I think FASTA also um, is another route that we can use disposal of assets to uh, to fund um, consolidations. What I would say is that. As we are looking at um, the kind of closing of, of leases or um, uh, new occupancy uh, periods, that's an opportunity through the normal cycle for us to address this as well. So really making sure that as projects come up, we are considering how the future of work should should uh, be addressed through those those projects. Um, there's a there's an incredible opportunity just for what's cycling through now. In fact, there was a question in our chat about a specific project in, in Flagstaff. Um, we won't have the time to get into the um, into the details here, but I know that um, one way that we could address that, even in a project that may have started at least to see what's possible, would be to approach the um, the workplace executive in that region. I, I would assume, right, Jane? They want to reach out to the person that's listed in, I guess, Arizona would be region. Yeah, seven. absolutely. That would be Stacy Fong in region nine, GSA region nine. And uh, we did have one more question, and I wanted to, to ask this because I, I think they're they're feeling brave. But as far as approaching management, is there any kind of like a fact sheet or a, uh, a slip page that they could use to propose this concept? I'm working on that right now. Um, it was intended to be a one pager. I think it's going to be a two pager, but we're we're getting that together, and we'll have that shortly. Jane, I knew you were going to be working on that fact sheet. That's why I asked that question. So I love fact sheets. Um, yeah, I, I, exactly. Well, uh, before we close this out, and um, what, like uh, Jane had mentioned, a lot of these questions, we are getting them, we're writing them down feverishly, and we're gonna be answering these in a frequently asked, uh, we'll put this in a frequently asked document, make sure that everybody has access to it, and we'll get to your, your questions. So, um, Jane and Brian, before I close it, this out, do you have any further comments, parting words? I just wanted to thank everybody for listening to the conversation today and just let you know this is really just the start of it. We are really excited about the future of work. Um, as horrible as the pandemic has been, it's certainly opened our eyes and given us this opportunity to work in new ways and be more effective and hopefully also at the same time save taxpayer dollars. So, you know, this is again just the start of the conversations and really appreciate your time. 
Yes, absolutely. So uh, we thank you so much for being a part of this conversation and we really look forward to engaging in the future. Um, the future is bright. We have a long way to go, but a lot of opportunity. All right, if, if we could go to the last slide there. That'll show our resources and our links to our future presentation. So uh, thanks, Brian and Jane, for a great presentation, as well as our acting PBS commissioner uh, for her opening remarks. I want to thank all of you, our clients, who are able to join us today. We will post formal written responses to the questions and comments you posted in our Q&A panel pod, as, as well as the, uh, the document for future reference at gsa.gov backslash CES. And speaking of our upcoming client enrichment sessions, we have a great schedule. We're still in the planning phases of posting those on our site, but the first one that's coming up is our e-read digest on, uh, in May there. So go ahead and if you want to learn more about e reader or just want a refresher on that, go ahead and click on that registration link and get your name on the list. In closing, the goal of the client enrichment series is to engage our audience in workplace topics that contribute to your mission success and to your effective management of your real estate workplace programs. Again, thank you again and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks everyone. Thank you.